Hello and welcome to Sports by Compion. My name is Stephen Compion. We have a great episode here for you today, guys. Thank you for joining us. Um, I know we've been a little bit MIA from the football and impact sports landscape in general. Very, very sad time, but we've been busy. We've been doing all kinds of stuff. The Rockford Ravens season has officially started. We are already 0-2. Great start to the season. You know, we had good old Peoria Pigs come visit us, and they proved to be too much for us in the first half. Down 35, well, down five tries to one in that first half. Real hard for the boys to come back after that, although we did try. Quite the comeback from the Rockford Ravens there in week one in the second half. Brought a lot of our finishers in, and uh, they did some fine work, but we ultimately fell short and lost by, I want to say, three points or so. Then, this past week, we went and traveled out to Lake County in Gurney, Illinois. What a lovely area. Head on out there, and we played Lake County, a team we have not beat in quite some time, and it has been a, quite a bummer playing them the last couple times. This time, we probably should have beat them. We had them down in, fir in the first half, 19-7. to seven. However, your Rockford Ravens decided to take a nap in the second half here. We were a little bit tired. It was quite hot in the second half especially. So, yeah, we just went ahead and let them score a bunch of tries in the second half and ultimately ended up losing 29-19 to 19, or 28-19. to 19. I don't know. We lost. It was rough. Yeah. By, by a lot of points after having been up by, by five, you know, or whatever it was. No, 19-7 19, 19 was what I said. Anyway, way too many fucking points to be losing in the second half. God, dude, it is so rough continuing to lose these games. Eating at my soul. And um, don't know if the rest of the boys feel the same way, which ultimately was probably going to lead to more losing. But hey, you know, maybe one day we'll build up a high school program here and we'll find a way to take some of those guys' spots. Probably not anytime soon, if we're being completely honest. Yep, no, no time soon at all. Hey, there has been some international rugby taking place. You know, it's not the main thing we're covering here. Um, but you have New Zealand, match steel win from Australia. No, I'm sorry, the Springboks. Good for them. They've been under a lot of pressure lately. That head coach of theirs may or may not end up getting fired. He's under so much pressure. Um, it's a tough time to be a forward to, to be one of the New Zealand selectors because like they're such a legendary team and they just have been on quite the backwards trend lately. Um, playing against the Springboks, especially, is probably the best team right now. They had this crazy ass play where one of their replacement forwards was like trying to fuck up the knee of the outside center for uh, for New Zealand. Really a weird, sketchy play. Like watching the replay, the dude definitely was going for that knee. It was not cool at all to see. So, yeah, he um, he was given a red, but uh, ultimately the New Zealand managed to pull off that win, so good for them. They're finally getting back into form a little bit more. Hopefully they'll figure it out. Um, it's going to be a really interesting World Cup coming up here next year, and Sports by Compion will be covering a lot of it. We're still looking forward to this U.S. game that should be taking place here in a couple months. Uh, but, yeah, we also want to keep you informed with how the uh, Rockford Ravens. On the other hand, the Rockford Ravens women's team went, went over to Michelin, Illinois. I have no idea where the fuck that is, but it is three hours here from Rockford. And they absolutely hammered the handful of other teams that all managed to show up and try to form a tens team by themselves. Captain Ren Felton reported two easy tries, to which they then decided to take back a couple steps and just, you know, find people in space and work the offense, um, to which the Ravens apparently worked it quite well. Referee sort of lost count of the score, but the last he knew, it was 52-0, to zero, and they did not play the full 80 minutes of rugby they thought they were going to. Only played 50 because these girls didn't show up, didn't have a team, and then got their ass kicked by the Rockford Ravens. So very sad for all these other women's teams. It's kind of a testament to Illinois rugby, and I say rugby in general. is always struggling a little bit, especially since the pandemic. That said, the Ravens have had a lot more people out, a lot more rookies, so there's definitely some stuff to build on. We just got to keep doing it, and it's been frustrating as a guy sitting here with, um, since the pandemic, just watching us lose, 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 lose. It starts to wear on your conscience a little bit, on your psyche. It's not fun, not good times, but um, yeah, we'll see what happens, man. We still got four more games, still got a shot to go 500. We got to win next week at the Woodsman and uh, take it from there. But hey, guys, we got some football to talk about. That's the good news. That's what the sport is good. This is what the show is good talking about. Uh, we're going to back it all the way back up to week one. You know, opening opening game was the Bills events the Rams. Now, honestly, I don't really care about this game other than I happen to be starting Matt Matthew Stafford for that game. And he got his ass kicked, let me tell you. Bills were looking fucking dangerous out there. 
Um, Rams definitely, I feel like, left asking some questions after that first week one. You know, there has been some doubters in my group about how well the Ravens are going to be. I mean, the Rams, and I was surprised by this. This game with the Falcons, apparently they completely blew this lead. I did not watch it. We'll pretend I did, but also fuck the Saints. I'm disappointed they came back and stole this game from the Falcons. So, surprising first game, I would say, out of Marcus Mariota. <laughs> did some fine work, but the Falcons, being the Falcons, man, they hate hanging on to those um, leads. I don't know what's going on with them. Browns at Panthers, revenge game for Baker Mayfield. Baker's going to be disappointed with the way this one turned out. Um, ultimately, it's a pretty good defense um, on both sides, but, it, you know, I, I actually started Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb, and they both did very well that game. So, you know, God bless the offensive coordinator for the for the Cleveland because I've started both those guys two weeks now and they're just killing it. So they're all about running the ball and I'm fucking here for it. I mean, when you've had Jacoby Brissett at, at quarterback, you too may also run the ball a lot and it, you would be smart to do so. Then this one, 49ers at Bears, a very, very rainy game and uh, the Bears ultimately pulled off the win. Justin Fields didn't look terrible. Had a couple good passes. Well, not the same for Trey Lance, although it was pouring, cheating rain. Hard to judge a kid on his first game, which we will not do here on uh, Sports by Compion. But we will say that Justin Fields, who um, there's an episode that was missing out there in the ether. But I've had some words about the lad. You know, I hope he proves me wrong. It looks like he's off to a good start, so good for him. Um, next game we have was the Steelers and the Bengals. Now, this is a complete stunner. We had the Steelers ultimately pull off a overtime victory over the Bengals. Rough time for the Bengals, man. Joey Burrow is getting sacked a lot. And uh, last this past week was not any different. Dude's probably already been sacked double-digit times. And we're only in week, coming on to week three. So, yeah, they did not fix those offensive line issues that they had since last year. To be honest, I'm kind of sad about that because they signed Alex Kappa. So, like, that's my guy. I want to see my guy doing well over there. You know, he's an ex-Buccaneer. We don't want to. We don't want our own to look bad out there. So it's not a great sign that he was sent over there to fix the offensive line along with some other signing. I forget who, but um, that shit ain't fixed. They're getting their ass kicked over there, and Joey Burrow is running for his life. Dude threw four interceptions because he's feeling the pressure. This game was a surprise to me. Eagles at Lions. Motor City Dan Campbell Lions look like they're ready to go, man. They're out here balling. Now, they need a little bit of more more out of their defense to hold this Eagles to less than 38 points. 38 points is a lot of points. You got to hold them out to less than that. But, man, they scored 35 points. Probably should have won that game. I started DeAndre Swift. Very great. Great start for me. Thank you, Swift. In case you guys are wondering about the Sports by Compion fantasy strategy, it's running backs early and often. Like, early and often go running backs, and you're going to – you may or may not win your league. Now, the early going, you're going to probably get slapped by some crazy receiver like me and Cooper Cup I had to play in week one. And like, okay, yeah, great. You're going to have a couple good get weeks. But the consistency of running backs over the course of the season usually wins me my leagues, especially whenever we get to the later parts of the year and certain running backs are injured and everyone's looking for a replacement here or there. There just isn't that many. So it's always nice to be stocked up on running backs for when those, uh, for when those injuries and other things come. Colts. Ended up tied with the Texans. What is going on with Pat McAfee's Colts this year, man? Um, spoiler alert, they lost this week, too. This last week, too. So, they are now 0-1-1. Very awkward schedule to start. Not at all what... Not at all what Jim Mersey and Matt Ryan had planned for this squad. There's no way we were coming out here like, hey, let's go 0-1-1. Um, they've had a relatively easy first couple games, too. So, like, this is really not a good sign. You could argue they definitely need to get their shit together because not a good start. Patriots got absolutely demolished by the, by the Miami Dolphins, who we're going to get into what the Dolphins did this last week. But this Dolphins squad is looking very, very legit. Um, Mac, Mac Jones got fucking hammered and coughed up a fumble that led to a strip sack, uh, fumble that led to a touchdown. So big week for the, for that corner coming off the blitz there. Uh, Lamar Jackson just absolutely torched the poor little Jets. Dude was bombing it to this new kid, Bateman, 
who, you know, once again, we'll get into the, that later, but Bateman's off to a very strong start with his season. Huge game out of him. Lamar Jackson found him deep a couple times. Lamar was looking good, man. His arm was looking fucking dangerous out there. Commanders and uh, Jaguars. You know, the Jaguars actually moved the ball relatively well. If you're going back and watching some of these highlights, Trevor Lawrence doesn't look terrible. You know, um, but Carson Wentz had a pretty damn good week. <clears throat> the Carson Wentz has actually had two good weeks now. I'm considering picking him up in a fantasy league of mine where I have some slow starters. Um, but it's pretty cool, man. This, uh, you know, it's good to see how the Jaguars them moving the ball a little bit and doing some cool stuff. But they ultimately fell short in this uh, game against the Commanders, which everyone has counted the Commanders out. So good for them getting a win there. Giants over the Titans. That was a shock of the week for sure. Uh, the Titans were mostly dominating this game, had this one mostly in control, but they kind of didn't fully knock the, the Giants out of this one, right? And then Barkley just went off. Barkley had a hell, himself a hell of a game. Uh, I think two touchdowns? Uh, I could be wrong. Either way, big game out of him. Definitely led his team back to victory. The head coach goes for it, you know, and, and wins the game that way. That was fucking cool. Like, they scored a touchdown. It was nineteen twenty with, like, a handful of seconds left, and these guys fucking went for it. So, that was pretty sick. I think uh, the Titans kicker ended up missing, too. Yeah, pretty sure he did. Rough game for the Titans, man. Not the way you want to start your year. We have the Chiefs just absolutely take apart these poor little Cardinals. So the Cardinals got some um, second-half touchdowns. Good for them. That first half was a complete blowout. Patrick Mahomes looked absolutely ridiculous, and he completely dominated that poor um, Cardinals squad and a Kyle Murray who just got paid over this offseason. So we'll see how all that all develops for them. Raiders ended up falling short to the Chargers. <clears throat> you know, Good resurgence from the Raiders. Uh, they kind of came back in this game. It was another one of those. The Chargers were ahead for a while. Justin Herbert played a good game. But ultimately, the um, comeback by the Raiders fell short because this Chargers defense is pretty good, and they got some good pressure on Derek Carr throughout the day and continue to do so. Tra uh, Raiders offense actually off to a slow start to start the year. Packers got handled by the Vikings, and I, of course, had started um, Aaron Rodgers in a different league for this one. So that was also very nice for me. But yeah, maybe you should have seen this one coming after the slow start the Packers had last year in their very first game. But yeah, completely demolished by the division rival, um, the Vikings. Came down to Zadarius Zadarius Smith, who I believe that kind of had a messy exit from the Packers. Wasn't exactly happy with some of the things that went down. He was over with the Vikings now and just had a field day, man. The guy probably had at least two sacks and countless pressures on um, Aaron Rodgers all day. Was talking shit to him. Definitely got in the dude's head. Hats off to the Vikings defense. They played a hell of a game. And they definitely deserve that win. Then, before we get to this main headliner, I just wanted to go ahead and talk to you guys real quick about a non-sponsor sponsor of us here at Sports by Compion. And that would be Clancy's Chips. Now, they make a lot of kettle, crunchy, delicious chips. I personally like their salt and vinegar chips. I can pretty much destroy one of those just about any time. A good old bag of salt and lemon, like, I mean, vinegar, hook it up. They also have barbecue. They also have jalapeno. They have a lot of different flavors. Clancy's makes some excellent chips, and if you want some crunchy deliciousness in your life, Clancy's could be for you. Chips is arguably one of the best snacks out there. Personally, I think it's the best, but, you know, I don't know. Some other people may or may not have other opinions. You guys are wrong. That's okay. Moving on with the show here. So Tampa Bay Buccaneers took on the Cal Dallas Cowboys. Now this was, um, as you can see, quite a defensive game. If you were actually watching the game, the Buccaneers were having a very hard time moving the ball against the Cowboys. And when they, we did get down to the red zone, couldn't block, block Michael Parsons. He had two third, third um, down sacks, but it wasn't even just him. And we were having a hard time blocking just about everybody. To be fair to um, Tampa, we uh, ended up losing... Donovan Smith at one point in the game after he got beat inside by Michael Parsons He was trying to get back and ended up getting his elbows smashed. It looked really nasty It was a rough play for him. He got beat inside the quarterback gets sacked You're trying to turn around to help him and you get fucking taken out of the game and For this coming week, so it was a bummer real bummer losing Donovan Smith there. Um, Josh Wells comes in for us Also couldn't block Michael Parsons very surprising <clears throat> That's not even to mention the reconstructed offensive line, interior offensive line. I already mentioned my boy Alex Kappa having left to the Cincinnati Bengals, where he's struggling with over there apparently. But anyway, back here at home, we are also struggling a little bit. We got rookie Luke Gecki at guard. We have um, 
Shit, I don't even know who's at center now. Hensy? Is it Hensy? Yeah, I think it's Hensy. Hensy. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. Um, Robert Hensy, who's our third round, fourth round pick from either last year or two years ago. Either way, we got a super young offensive line there. And then who's the other guard? Oh yeah, Shaq Mason. That's probably our most solid. Uh, that's our, that's our, that's hands down our most solid interior player. But yeah, we got Luke Gekigi and Robert Hainsey holding down the middle, and um, this offensive line in general is 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 still getting off the ground, you could say. So hopefully we can at least try to stay healthy because spoiler alert, week two against the Saints, Josh Wells gets injured again. Um, my problem with Josh Wells as a backup is like I feel like every time he comes in, he ends up getting hurt. It's like, dude, you're supposed to be the backup. You're not. You can't be getting hurt. You're you're the backup. Like, fuck, man. So yeah, Josh Wells went down yesterday against the Saints, um, and we brought in this guy Walton. Dude had no NFL snaps until last night. But you know what? He played okay. I don't think it was like any big mess ups by him. Either way, this offensive line is under siege. It may or may not be time. To bring in some veterans. This is getting scary, man. What are we going to do? Like, we got to defend the fucking GOAT, dude. We can't get in. If he gets injured, if Tom Brady gets injured, the Buccaneers are going to call this season. We're fucking beat. Anyway, defense is playing lights the fuck out, though. Holy shit. This defense has given up 13 points in two games. You've heard that correct. 13 points in two games. That's arguably the best that's going on in the NFL right now. Uh, we'll see how the rest of this week shakes out, but that really might be the best. Now, it's crazy that how well this team is playing because this is a team that is on the field a lot. You know, right now the offense is struggling a little bit to get some first downs going. We're running the ball like every fucking first down again. That's just what Brian Leftwich believes in. He's like, run the ball on first down. And look, I'm here for it too in Madden sometimes, but a lot of times I pass the ball too. Because guess what? They're expecting the run on the first down, Brian. Okay? We might need to switch it up here a little bit. Either way, this defense is on the field a lot, and they are playing very well. They have interceptions in both games now, flying around the field, making people pay. As you can see, holding the Cowboys to three points. God bless them. Monday Night Football did not watch, but as you can see, it was a very sloppy game. <clears throat> Russell Wilson's return to home against the Seattle Seahawks. Mixed reception over there in Seattle by his former fans. Um, you know, Russell Wilson's one of those characters. I'm not, I've never really quite been a fan of the guy, but he does seem to be genuine in his, in his, um, what am I looking for? Corniness. And his corniness and absolute just buy in to the Russell Wilson brand, he does appear to be sincere. So maybe don't hate on it. You can't hate on it because it's his brand, but yeah, I, I am not the biggest Russell Wilson fan. So I can understand how him coming back, the Seattle Seahawks weren't the happiest to see him. And I'm sure they were very, very happy to get that win. And, you know, frankly, the Denver Broncos are sort of struggling coming out here too. This is also only week two. So I mentioned a couple offenses now that have been struggling to get going, but not all that surprising whenever you consider the fact that um, it's only week two. You know, a lot of these units haven't quite had the chance to, to have cohesion in this yet. Miami Dolphins at, what was it at? Uh, let's see. I was actually curious about this earlier. I saw the picture and I was like, was this at Miami or was this in um, Baltimore? Ah, fuck it. We'll just say it was in Baltimore. M-I-T, M-N-T Stadium, which is Baltimore? I don't fucking know. Anyway, hell of a game here. I didn't see this one, but apparently the fucking, well, I, mean, I was watching it on Red Zone, so as much as you want to consider that, but. And then I had to go run halfway through the, the game. So, somehow, these guys were down 21-0. And I personally have been a, to a tongue of a low, a doubter slash wondering what the hell is going on. This guy brought them back from 21 points down through six touchdown passes. That includes four touchdown passes in the fourth quarter. And that's how he led his team to victory. Probably shutting up a lot of doubters, a lot of cr critiques. Um, this was a hell of a game out of our boy Tua Tonga Valoa. Almost 500 yards, six touchdown passes, two to Tyreek Hill, two to Jalen Wall. Both of them well over 500, 100 yards. Tyreek almost hit two. So did Wall on, on it, actually. He might as well just keep on chucking it to both those guys. 11 receptions a pop. Man, what a game out of those two. Holy shit. That is a crazy com um, wide receiver duel they have over there right now. Uh, not to mention their tight end, Geki. 
uh, Mike Geiki, not to be uh, not to be discounted. Certainly a very good tight end. We might have a legit Miami squad over here. This might be a legit team to worry about. They're over here handling business, taking out the Baltimore Ravens, and Lamar Jackson played a good game. Like, Lamar Jackson played a very good game. 300 yards, three touchdowns, rushed for some more yards, too. Look at this. He ran for, oh, shit. He ran for 119 yards and a touchdown, too. Lamar Jackson played his heart out, and the Dolphins still beat him. That is a hell of a game. Definitely probably the game of week two. I guess the better how the rest of this. How the rest of this week shakes up, that's probably the game of the week for sure. Uh, the other one we had here, um, ba -ba 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 -ba, it is the Chargers and the Chiefs. This is a division rivalry if I've seen one. Uh, that was Thursday night, actually. Very, very good game. <clears throat> you know, uh, a lot of back and forth. I did see a lot of, a lot of this one. Uh, the Chargers had a lot of chances to really, really put up a lot of points. But you can't underestimate playing the Chiefs. You can't underestimate playing that Chiefs defense who's... You know, they're, opt they're opportunistic is what I'm saying about them. You know, they seem to be keeping people out of the end zone when they need to. Uh, Justin Herbert showed a lot of heart in this game, ended up breaking his ribs, and uh, Staley kept him in there, and he kept moving the ball, kept throwing it. Good for him. He ultimately falls short of a very good Chiefs team, as we just saw. They completely destroyed the Cardinals, um, and they lose only by a field goal. So this is a very close division rival game. Um, expect the same thing whenever these two teams play again. Chiefs are looking good. Chiefs are probably looking like one of the top teams in the AFC as usual. As usual through two weeks. So we'll see if they can continue it. But certainly um, a hell of a game there to start. AFC is off to a strong start as usual. And then the Jets surprised the Browns. That was a huge surprise for me. I did not think Joe Flacco was going to lead the Lonely Jets to a victory over the uh, Cleveland Browns. Ultimately, you got to do a better job of um, keeping the freaking Jets out of the end zone. How do you let them score 31 points? Like. What happened in this game? Can we get some details? Was there freaking lots of interceptions? I know um, Jacoby Brissett threw one interception to end the game, but that's pretty brutal, man. Like, you gotta you gotta be better. So they mostly held the run in check, but they just had Corey Davis got loose for one. This isn't even, like, a lot of super good play out of them. I mean, I guess this is one of those games you have to watch to know exactly how the Browns managed to lose this. But they did. Hey, big game out of Amari Cooper, though. First game, first big one he's had over there with the Cleveland Browns. As you can see, though, my boys Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt still doing well. Did Kareem Hunt get some catches, too? Yeah, he did. He had a few. So not, not a huge game out of Kareem Hunt, actually. And people were saying I should start um, Chubb over him. <clears throat> I mean, uh, Kareem Hunt over Chubb. You know, sometimes people say silly stuff. You can't listen to everything they say. But anyway, so that's the end. The Jets managed to win this game. Good for them, dude. Like... That's a huge win over the Browns, and the Browns got to be sick about this one. That's one of the ones you needed to win, hang on to, and stack so that when Deshaun Watson comes back, you guys still have a chance at the Super Bowl, I mean, at the playoffs, because, yeah, you can't be dropping those kind of games. Commanders ended up losing this one to the Lions. This ended up getting a lot closer. It was something like 30-0 to zero at halftime. Um, good shout-out to Dan City, Motor City Dan Campbell's guys. You know, they played a hell of a game. <clears throat> completely dominated offensively. St. Brown looks so fucking good. That kid is so fast, and they had some cool plays to clay us, um one of their running backs too. But yeah, shout out to St. Brown. That kid's on a fire. He's been on, he's been so good, like dating back to like the last I don't know last half half of last season, last eight games or so of last season. The guy's just been blowing up, and he doesn't look like a super huge number one receiver, but the, he's putting some numbers on the board. Very good game out of him again. Let's have a look at those exact numbers. What did we get, St. Brown? Yeah, I'm surprised that Washington came back so much. Look at this. 15, they scored 27 points in the second half. That's pretty good for them. Not bad. But, I mean, as you can see, the Lions continued with what they were up to. All right, so it was 22-0 to zero at halftime. Not, nothing too crazy. Currently, no stats. All right, well, whatever. We don't need to know exactly how St. Brown did, but we, you guys can take my word for it. He had a big day. I know this because I saw him on fantasy somewhere, and it was like, whoa, that's a lot of, that's a lot of points. I was not able to draft him this year because people were way overestimating him, I believe, or maybe not overestimating him. But I don't even know if we need to go into this one. Colts zero, zero points against the Jaguars. Pat McAfee is going to go off on them, and I am absolutely excited to hear it. Can't believe that the Colts got 
literally zero. That's pretty crazy. I have Jonathan Taylor in one of my leagues. He did only get seven points. It was quite disappointing. But you know what? Getting back to my strategy of always respecting the running back and drafting them. Some other guy had to draft um, Rashad Stevens, New England running back. Guy got six points because he's like a third. Whatever it is they do in New England running backs. You don't really trust running back, New England running backs, man. Bill Belichick's crazy. He's like, I'll go with whatever I need to do. Yeah, anyway. So he, he, that guy probably drafted him like really late. You know what, dude? My running back who had a completely shit day still did better than that third string running back. So that's why you draft running backs early and often. Anyway, getting to a game that actually matters here, like the Buccaneers. 20 over 10 to our fucking division rivals, the Saints. If there's one team I personally hate, and therefore a lot of this podcast will hate, we'll probably, we might find a team one. I hate the Saints. I really don't like that team. I don't like Marshawn Lattimore. I don't like Cameron Jordan. I don't like fucking, and whatever. I, I definitely didn't like Sean McDermott or um, their fucking coach, Sean Payton. Definitely wasn't so sad to see him retire. Fuck that guy. So, yeah, not a huge fan of the Saints. This game, if anyone knows about the history between the Buccaneers and the Saints over the last two years, this game was huge. We are literally 0-4 against the, against the New Orleans Saints since Tom Brady has come to uh, Tampa. And before that, since Bruce Arians has come to Tampa, he is 0-6 going into this game against the New Orleans Saints. Other than our playoff game back in 2021 when we creamed them. And went on to win the Super Bowl. But besides that game, we have not beat the Saints in almost three years. So it, this was a big game for us Bucks fans going in. We absolutely all hate the Saints. Fuck those guys. So going into this game was big. Um, it was rough, to say the least. It was literally uh, about 3-0 for most of the game. In fact, at one point, I think it was the end of the first half or the second end of the first half, I had to go for a run, as I mentioned. You know, your boy's over here trying to win fucking Rockford Ravens rugby games, and frankly, there's not a lot I can do to help the Buccaneers when they're losing. So instead, I went for a run with, my, with Sean Williams. Shout out, Sean. Fucking badass. And he make who. By the time I got back, Buccaneers had taken control of the game. It was, um, yeah, it was 20-3 to at that point. Sweet. Really awesome stuff. I... Missed it, but of course, my uh, fucking Marshawn Lattimore was jawing with um, Tom Brady out of nowhere. Mike Evans comes and just fucking, fucking lays him the fuck out. It was awesome. Really cool. They actually had both got ejected, which was great and very lovely because uh, and Marshawn Lattimore was off the field and fuck that guy. So, yeah, it was kind of sad to see uh, Mike Evans have to get ejected, but I did appreciate him coming over there and defending his quarterback. That looked cool, fucking cool. Leonard Fournette was there, too. Broke out into a bit of a fight between these teams. Like I said, they don't like each other. But, hey, the Buccaneers responded right after that game. I think uh, after that, I think it pissed off Tom Brady more. It pissed off his teammates. They were ready to cream this ultimately way, way worse team. The Saints have not been on par with the Buccaneers talent-wise. For like at least the last two years, if not the last three, and somehow they always beat us. So I am so fucking glad that we beat those fucking clowns over there in New Orleans, dude. Ugh, fuck the Saints. But anyway, we um we won that game. Uh, Winston had a heroics at the end, got one touchdown. I don't know why I said heroics. The dude had a terrible game. Three interceptions. The <laughs> fucking Devin White was like, we knew he was going to give us a lot of interceptions, and we were counting on it, and worked out. They ended up with three, one of them being a pick six by Jamel Dean, out of boy Jamel. He had two on the day, and one of those went back for six. So big day out of Jamel Dean, big day out of this Buccaneers defense once again. Coming up huge. No doubt this Buccaneers defense absolutely kept them in the game and won it for them. Thank baby Jesus for how well they're playing this season because Tom Brady and the offense are off to a bit of a slow start. Definitely not really putting this on Tom, but um, the receivers need to help them. The offensive line needs to block more. Hopefully the Buccaneers get to settle out as we continue um, through our process. Not too worried about it, though. Giants get a narrow, narrow, another, another narrow victory over the Panthers. Once again, this is one of those games I was kind of watching through red zone. You know, flipping back and forth. Um, I'll try to find more ways to watch more of these things. We can actually give some more detailed information about this kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying, Tiger? Anyway, uh, this was another close one. Baker Midfield falls once again. Giants fans got to be happy with this 2-0 and start for them. You know what, frankly, good for the Giants. You know, they've been kind of sucking the last couple of years. And football does feel a little weird when the Giants suck. 
and that's kind of been the case for the last many years. So it's good to see them playing well. We'll see what happens, see if they can keep it up. Uh, but this actually does feel like a great time to go into one of our non-sponsor sponsors, which is JBL. They have excellent speakers. Of course, most people have heard of JBL since they started the whole speaker movement. Ever since then, has been flooded by everybody and your mother who makes a speaker. And you know what? Some of them are fine. We're not here to shit on those guys. What we're here to do is talk to you about Jamel, JBL. They come with their own specialized chargers because they are just that much better. And this is cool, crisp music coming out at all times whenever you want it. Whatever kind of music you're into, get into a JBL and maximize that shit. Yeah. So yeah, JBL, cool brand for speakers and other like devices. And I think it just has speakers, actually. So, moving on. Steelers and the pa Patriots play each other. Now, this was a very close game as well. We had um, Matt... You know, I'm a little surprised to see this one, but ultimately, I guess we see Mitchell Trubisky still kind of struggling. To find some cohesion with um, the Steelers. They're sort of... I mean, I don't think they're too disappointed being that one and one after that nice win against the... Um, against the Cincinnati Bengals. So a good win for them, for the Patriots getting back on on track with a one-on-one -on -one record as well. 17-14, to 14. Mac Jones must have been happy with his day. But Belichick, I mean, you know, we'll see what happens with these two teams, but I don't know if we were going to see either of these two historic franchises in the playoffs this year. <clears throat> we'll see what, what Cooper O'Connell has to say about it, but I don't, I don't know, man. Falcons fall once again to the Rams, and this was actually a really close game. I was kind of surprised to see it be this close. But, yeah, ultimately, the Rams finally get their shit together. Looks like they had a slow second half, but did enough to maintain, to get the victory. Uh, the Marcus Mariota, two touchdowns, two interceptions. Not terrible. Matthew Stafford, three touchdowns, two interceptions. Slightly better. Not a great performance out of either of these two quarterbacks. I'm actually considering dropping Matthew Stafford from my fantasy team or at least putting him on the bench and seeing who else we have out there in the world who might want to play some quarterback for us. What up, Carson Wentz? Trying to put up 25 points for me again? The dude has back-to-back -back weeks of over 20 points. Just saying. But anyway, yeah, this was a, this must have been a pretty good game. You know, the old Rams and and, uh, and the Atlanta Falcons. So we still got two games still coming. Obviously, we have the one tonight or uh, Monday. Oh, wait, it's a doubleheader on Monday, which is tonight. Yeah, I forgot. Tonight is Monday, in fact. And it will be the Titans versus the Bills as well as the Vikings versus the Eagles. Personally, I think the Titans are going to lose this game. I mean, I don't think that's actually too surprising to be hearing. It makes me a little nervous for Derrick Henry, that's for sure, because that happened in one of my fantasy games. But I think the Bills are going to pull this one off. They just looked way too dangerous in that first game. If they can play like that again, they will probably take this game pretty comfortably. I'm going to take the Vikings for this other one. I know there are, they may or may not be the underdog, but I think they had, had a fantastic game against the um, Packers if they play anything like that. In this coming game against the Eagles, they're gonna they're gonna win. The Eagle the Eagles have got to play some better defense. You can't, you know. We'll see what happens. They have a lot of talent on this team. Jalen Hurts played really well that first game. We'll see if he can continue it again against a pretty tough Vikings defense. You know, if you're that Vikings defense, you're gonna want to do the exact same thing. Just pressure up there with four people and drop the rest into coverage. So I didn't really watch the rest of these games. We'll just kind of go over them real briefly. Um, Seattle, you know, this was slightly closer at first. Real bummer out of this one was Trey Lance going down with a season-ending ankle injury. Real bummer to hear that one. Um, you, you don't want to see the young player go down. But they do have – it all ended up working out, keeping jo jo Jimmy Garoppolo there because he started – he was able to step right in for them and get the 49ers their first win of the season. The Bengals, man, they are now 0-2 after dropping a game to the Cowboys. This was Cooper Rush at the helm for the Cowboys – Got it done. Had a game drive. Had a game drive at the end there where he put them into field goal range. Um, let his guy do his thing. They kicked it through. <sighs> Bengals are now twenty. I mean, zero and two. And once again, you're going to have um, Joey Burrow getting sacked six times in this game. So now he's just starting to feel all kinds of pressure. Their offense isn't moving like it was last year. Uh, only one, no interceptions this game, but he also was under two hundred yards. Joey, uh, Joe Mixon couldn't get really going either. That Dallas defense is very difficult against the run. Jamar Chase, a pretty quiet day out of him as well. For the Jamar Chase owners who drafted him in the first round instead of drafting a running back, that's why you draft running backs. Although Derrick Henry was really slow last week, so I can't talk too much shit. But you know how it goes, man. Running backs are definitely more consistent than receivers. That's what I think at least. 
Now, Broncos versus Texans. We had the Broncos go 16-19. Real sloppy game out of them. I'm not even going to say much about this, but um, Russell Wilson, a little slow with his offense so far. They're still only at 37 points for the season. Cardinals find their first win of the game of the year. Put the Raiders in an 0-2 hole. Wonder what happened there. Looked like it was at least a pick six by uh, Murphy, I saw. Packers went ahead and dominated the Bears, 27-10. A comfortable win for Aaron Rodgers to get back into the saddle and the swing of winning things. Okay, fancy week out of him. We'll, we'll see if we need to replace him or not. Probably not. Guys, <clears throat> this has been Sports by Compion. I know we were out for a couple weeks. Well, we're back. There may or may not be yet more episodes coming to you while we have more of our guests start reacting to some of these games. There is a coming week three coming up. Hopefully we can get some people to go over that with me. But we appreciate your support. Appreciate you watching the show. Hope you continue to enjoy it, because we certainly enjoy producing it. Sports by Compion, out!